it's 4 30 in the morning and you guys know the routine there's stuff out there that needs got and we're going to get it i'm johnny garage johnson and this is hardcore garage Well, we've made it a little over um, Indianapolis. We're up north of Indianapolis. I think we have about four hours left to go, and we are headed that way, going after something very cool. Me and Dad, this is, uh, <laughs> it's been a heck of a ride. We ended up leaving at like 4.30 this morning, so it's just now getting daylight. But we are ready and excited. Well, we are running into some, well, they shut down the highway because there was a wreck, apparently somewhere up here near 231 and 65 is the road that we're on so they're guiding us off the road up here and uh, hopefully that doesn't detour us too much for the day I'm taking a break and dad's driving <laughs> and he's doing a mighty fine job <laughs> staying at least seven miles above the speed limit to keep Ro him happy <laughs> rolling in the Prius breaking laws <laughs> construction not construction. No stopping, standing, or parking. Don't do anything. Yeah, don't do anything. Like we have a choice. We have made it into Illinois. We are getting ready to go across the sky something bridge. We've had to go through two toll booths so far. And it's been about, what, four or five? Six bucks, something like that, so far. We way up here. It's the tall buildings over there. Not sure what that little thing is there. driveline vibrations going on at a weird speed there. It's got this 700 foot drive shaft on this thing. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to baby it I think. Doing 60 right now. Those uh, two eights, <laughs> they're dogs. I'm learning that real quick. Hear it? As soon as I let off the gas it, it quits. Huh. Hopefully I'll make it home. actually been pretty cool um, after I got to relax a little bit it's not it's, it's not gonna do anything the, the, the temperature gauge been fluctuating a little bit on me it kind of had me worried there for about an hour thought for sure something bad was gonna happen um, kind of figured out that the, the driveline too it just gotta gotta either let off or give it a little more a little bit more gas when it makes that noise at about 45 to 50 and uh, we're taking route 45 home it's a state route uh, 
basically going through every little town that there is. We are finally in Illinois now. I believe that I am lower than Chicago. Uh, Chicago is off to my left, but it's this has been it's been pretty fun. I wish there were some other. People. I wish there were some other people riding in the back to enjoy this with me, but uh, Dad's back there in the the Prius, following along to make sure everything's going good. And probably going to take me a week to get home, on, <laughs> depending on how far I can take 45 down. But hey, I'm having a blast, guys. Pretty cool frozen custard sign there. Look at that minty dash. Look at that dark sky. Good thing these wipers work. Hadn't really rained on us that much on the way home and uh, haven't been any leaks either, so that's good, right? Yeah, that just whole dash is nice. Sweet, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's like twelve forty five AM. <laughs> we left this morning at 4.30 a.m. So I've been up for about 20, well, no. I uh, got up at 2.30. So I've been up for 22 hours at least. Um, heck of a ride, heck of a ride. My neck and back are just thrashed right now, guys. Uh, I'm sure we went over 500 miles. It's 477 miles from here there with all the direct routes and driving this thing for the first time I did not want to get on a four five six lane highway and do 70 miles an hour <laughs> it was quite scary <laughs> but uh so we took a very very long way home I don't know how I would say we were probably on back roads for two and a half hours which gave us about an hour worth of home time so we still had like seven hours to go by the time we got back to the main road um but it was nice it was nice we got to go through a bunch of little towns i, I wish that i would have been more uh, cognitive of what i was recording we went by this old uh wrecking yard and it was clear full of old cars i mean i don't think there was anything in there newer than like a 60s and it i mean probably at least 500 that, that we could see as we drove by. And I was like, oh. and that dad, when we got pulled over for gas late, he's like, did you see all those old cars? And I was like, yeah, man, wish we'd had time to pull over and stop. But of course this was way later than I wanted to, to uh, get going to do this. Um, so what did we get? If, if you don't know, if you can't tell or whatever, uh, if you didn't see it on uh, Facebook marketplace, it is an 84 Chevy S10. I guess it's just a regular one. Doesn't say Tahoe or or uh, Durango or High Sierra or nothing like that on the glove box. Um, I got the paperwork here. I can like give you some more details and stuff. But this was it was basically taken. I don't know if it was brand new. Honestly, I don't. But they took it to like a conversion van place. Uh, Shelly. Um, trying to think of some of the others. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, but they, they build conversion vans and what they were doing at the time was taking these and the Ford Rangers and basically converting them into, I don't know if you want to call it a limousine, a van. It's not really a camper. I mean, there's a, there's a bed and these things fold down and you can sleep in them, but there's no camping type stuff. There's no, no toilet. There's no sink. There's no stove. There's none of, none of that kind of stuff, but there might be. <laughs> I ain't really sure what we're going to do with this yet, but uh, very, very cool. 100,000 and 111,000 miles, I think, something like that. But anyway, I, uh, when I seen it, I was just like, wow, that is freaking super cool um, to be able to have something so unique. Uh, I, I was enamored with these the first time I seen one at, I think it was Camp and Drag, the one that had the pop-up roof, which you know, had the uh, canvas around there, which I, I, it looked cool as hell, but I just thought, 
that's got to be a pain, that stuff. I mean, you're going to have to replace it. There's no way that that stuff's still good after all these years. Um, and then this one popped up, and I just kept seeing it over and over again. It, I, I want to say at, at one time it was 12 5 something like that for the, the price. And it, it just got passed around, and the prices dropped, and blah, blah, blah. And I seen it, and I thought, hmm, now's my opportunity to go get it. I tried my best to figure out different ways because I didn't want to, I did not want to drive that whole way and drive back. That just sucks. Um, I looked at, at getting a, uh, an airplane was my first thing and it was ridiculous because it was, you know, a seven, seven hour and 15 minutes, seven, 15 to seven forty five somewhere around there. And it was a, a five hour and 55 minute flight. And I'm like, that's, that's dumb. I'll have more time in that plus the money than I would if I just drove. So, um, then I tried to find a rent -a car that we could drop off in Milwaukee. And for some reason I couldn't get a one way rental to Milwaukee for whatever reason. They just didn't have one and none in the future. I couldn't, res you know, I asked him, tell me when you do got one. And he's like, we don't, we won't. <laughs> so whatever. Uh, then I tried to get some people to drive us that way. It would just be me and dad driving home. And it just different things happened and it just wasn't working out. So we just decided to say, screw it and took off. He, me and him split the road, uh, drive. I drove first four hours. He drove the second four, second four hours. And then we both had to drive all the way home. Very good time though. Uh, would have been better having a bunch of people in here to roll and just kind of break the monotony and keep your mind off of 500 miles. <laughs> Actually, I'm sure it's more than 500, uh, I don't even know how to tell. I guess I didn't write the mileage down or anything, so I could go on Google Maps and figure it out. But we took 45 um, clear from Milwaukee all the way down past Chicago. And I'm trying to think where we we kept cutting over and cutting over, and we were all the way down past where, the, if you know where I'm talking about, you go all the way up to, um, uh, what is it called, Gary, Indiana, and then you head west a little bit around the, the the lake and then you start going up well 45 was over a little bit farther and it went straight down and then curved back over and we missed gary and all all that crap we didn't have to go through none of them big cities but it was it was like the first maybe almost two hours of it was just basically city driving and stop and go and it, it was horrible <laughs> but it was still better than being on the highway trying to go crazy miles per hour with something that you're not used to driving. Um, as far as driving this thing there, there's some drive line vibrations we're going to check out. Um, and the thermostat or temperature gauge would, would fluctuate tremendously. Uh, it, it would go up to about 210 then drop down. It, and as soon as you accelerate, it would drop down and it wouldn't even even just sitting there at a, at a stoplight, it would go up to 210, then it would drop down. So I don't know if the gauge is just super sensitive or maybe there's some issues. I don't know. I, we checked every fluid, but we didn't check the <laughs> the uh, antifreeze before we took off. So maybe it just needs some antifreeze. Who knows? A couple other little things. I think that there's some there's some wood in here that needs needs to be replaced uh, or patched or something like that. I, I looked up under there and I could see some rot in the wood. Probably this door leaked or did leak at one time. Um, I'm sure that we're going to have some ceiling issues just because of all the windows. And one good thing though, this is like a solid shell on the back. So there's no things around the top edges or anything like, you know, like they were putting a, a pop top on something. So all that is sealed pretty good. Uh, that front window, I know it was leaking over in this corner here. You can actually see the streaking right there. And I had some water in the floorboard and another thing that i noticed on the way home was the heater wasn't working well when i got here and i lifted the hood the and, and i'm not sure why i don't even know if there's a button or something maybe that i didn't know it's, it's this is old school i don't know nothing about the dash either so forgive me but the air conditioning was was uh all sweaty like it had been on the entire time so something's not right there either and that may have been what was affecting not being able to get heat because the air conditioning was on so going to look into that too but it made it 500 miles uh that when we got back into um i want to say we were yes we had made it back into ohio on 75 i think when we stopped yeah we were on 70 75 or right before right 
on 70. I don't know, but we stopped it and got gas, ate a little bit of snacks. And then when I tried to start it, it didn't want to start. And that kind of scared me a little bit, but, um, pumped the throttle a couple times and it kind of gurgled a little bit and fired up. So that was good. Uh, love the dash. It's got some weird wear in, in some of the, the, the factory plastic up in there, the door panels and stuff, but the dash is like totally mint. The steering wheel is freaking nice too. Uh, Will we do anything with this? I mean, you know, I'm going to try to clean it up a little bit, but I, this isn't going to be no show vehicle. I don't think I just want to have fun. I want to be able to hang out, maybe, you know, take it camping, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe do some car shows, but, but totally for different reasons, not to go there to show a car to let people see this unique thing and have a place to hang out. So hope you guys like it. I'm going to show you all this tomorrow morning when it's daylight, we'll do a walk around a proper walk around and see everything. I'm going to, before we get out of here tonight, though, I'm going to at least show you the pimp lights inside since it is dark in here. And, uh, that's kind of cool. So hope y'all enjoy. Take it easy. Keep on trucking. Regular lights. Where's your pimp lights? Gotta dig them. Even came with his little teddy bear. That's my partner. He's gonna be riding. Welcome to Hardcore Garage. What did we bring home today? 1984 Chevy S10. Total badass. Conversion, camper, limousine. Purse, you name it. This thing is just pure badassery. I don't care what you say. I love it. So what we have here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> 84 s10 2.8 it runs about as fast as a baby but it did make it 500 plus miles home i'd really like to know how many i'm betting that we were close to 600 with all the extra driving that we did i'm learning about the history of this thing already and deciding what we want to do it almost kind of looks like one of the uh Handicap buses or whatever you want to call them. It's just it's just a good looking truck though, guys. So automatic. I think these were base models because there's nothing on the glove box that says anything as far as the special model or anything. One thing I've noticed so far, we're gonna go through and talk about the good and the bad, which there you can see the rocker has been replaced and not very well. They <laughs> Cosmetically, it looked good, huh? So, 84. That's a factory door. They had the built-in metal louvers. 82 to 85 had this interior, flat dash. A little bit different door panels. Got some wear right here from over the years. The funny thing, though, is right here. And on that side, too, like, what the heck really did that? It's not someplace your hand goes. Should we finish the outside before we do the inside? <laughs> really, really beautifully crappy paint job. Ugliest colors ever, but I love it. We'll definitely keep it that way since this was something special back in the day, you know. Um, from what I've heard, and this is all just word of mouth, word of mouth, because no one really knows, is that there was only five of these made. Identical to this one. I've got the information inside about as far as the uh, company brand name and stuff. Well, I'll add that in the video here in a little bit. But everything is really cool. It is a dually. Dual axle there. Really, really nice cock job. <laughs> but at least they painted it to try to make it look match. This body contour here really kind of screwed them up. They should have thought that out a little better. Crappy seats. We'll get back to that. Little window up there had some leaks. 
one good thing is it is one com complete piece of it runs up on the top complete piece of fiberglass so there is no area in the roof where it should leak anyway other than somebody put a luggage rack on there which I don't know how you'd even get to it <laughs> let's open this door here the door is open and closed really well look at that's kind of a, a little sketchy area there huh look how, how tight that tolerance is yeah the doors open and close very good and you can tell here immediately that, that is an aftermarket or at least a newer door brown 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 that's house carpet gonna probably change that eventually these seats are horrible i have no idea what they're out of but the padding is is pretty much gone on the driver's side and these ugly green teal whatever color that didn't match anything and unless that you know what it may have matched the rear seats originally now that i'm looking at the piping and stuff but i don't, I don't know why they greened out maybe through the windshield caused a little bit of weird fade or something coming through the green in the top of the windshield that's very strange though i, I for the life of me thought They've changed these seat covers. And this is an ugly console and hurts your arm when you lay on there, but that is something that the original company put in there, so it'll stay also. Uh, we have an aftermarket radio, which actually worked really well. <laughs> I hate aftermarket radios, but I think just for the sake of this being as close to the way it came, I'm going to leave everything that I think was probably done by the conversion company. We also have this button here, which opens the rear hatch. Just like on a blazer. And it shows that the shocks were replaced. And I bet you they should have got a little bit heavier ones. Because it will go up quite a bit more. And not hit you in the head when you try to walk in and out of there. So let's... What's up? Go to my office. <laughs> this little cover here clips in on the front of here and covers that up. Let me put this. So we're inside, and I don't, I don't think I did. I, I don't think I showed you guys the pimp lights last night. I don't know if they'll even show up in here tonight. But it has a LED. Yes, I'm pretty sure I did. See, I was out of it last night when I was doing the videos. So we got your lights back up under here. And we got a little bit of room back in here for good stuff. Uh-oh, what do we got up in here? We got an AC recharge kit. Ha! Huh, check that out. Boom! Nice. It was registered in 23, wasn't it? Not sure what that is. Got some cool guy sunglasses. I think that's it. Let me turn back around here and show you this way. I brought my vintage cooler just for looks. We've got curtains all the way around. You can close. It's nice and roomy, honestly. Headliner looks good. Those seats spin around. Pretty sure that thing comes up out of there. Stores behind the seat, probably. Nice view. Don't normally get an S10 pick like this, do you? These fold down so you could sleep in them if you needed to. That bed folds down so you could sleep in it if you needed to. Pretty cool little shelf right here. Gives you a weird feeling when you're sitting there having all that headroom in a nest in. It really does. Got some. I was leaking some oil right there. You can see the leak. It's going to have its things. So then you just decide, you know, what's the most important thing to fix. And I decided I would wear my pappy cap shirt. I thought that would be the most fitting thing to do this talk about campers. <laughs> So overall, totally satisfied with what we have here. Uh, it's by no means a perfect truck. And, you know, as somebody that, that leans more towards the, the stock NOS, purist side of S10s, I can see people wondering what the heck I would 
even want something like this for. And honestly, uh, dad was the one that, that he, he likes campers, um, likes vans, conversions, camping, uh, roughing it. <laughs> so this was sort of the thing he, he kept pushing. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. I know he wanted to make a road trip too. It didn't work out the way we wanted with both of us getting to cruise, but it was still a good time. So Look how blurry that is. It's just so bright out here, I think. Um, one thing that I didn't know these early dashes had was it has a wiper delay built in with a knob and it's got a whole lot of, of adjustments there. <laughs> Of course, your hood release. Let's pull that and take a look at this amazing 2.8. Honestly, it is super clean for an 84. I'm sure there's been stuff done to it. Uh, looks like the undercoat of the core support. <laughs> but, you know, new inners, which I had read that those were pretty rusty. So, somebody had at least took a little bit of time to try to make it a nicer vehicle. It didn't run bad. We, seen the little oil leaks that we had a little bit of oil some transmission fluid there maybe well that's all I got guys hope you enjoyed the ride we didn't get to take a whole lot of video on the way there just being so long one of these days I'll get my shit together and get an extra camera so I don't have to use the same camera as my phone it's my GPS and everything else we can get some cooler video because we did see some really, really cool things on that ride. Uh, probably would have taken me forever to edit through all that video, but might have been worth it. So, here we go, guys. 1984 conversion van, S10 camper, limo, funeral, bus. Call it what you will. I'm going to call it awesome. Y'all take it easy. Keep on trucking. Like, subscribe, comment, share. All the good shit. written by a dude that actually got to check it out so I emailed him and told him where the uh, truck was now and the condition pretty cool talks about you know the guy redoing it and asking 10.5 for it one of the older dudes it was pretty rough at one time I guess so they've actually done quite a bit all that just paperwork that we got with it 